Hi everyone, today we are cooking a traditional Italian dish. Um, this is a recipe handed down to me by my Italian grandmother. <laughs> I'm lying. Um, my mum, my grandmother was Italian, but this is my own recipe. It's going to be a beef lasagna, but it's going to have a little twist that will blow any other lasagna out of the water. So if you like grandma's lasagna, don't make this recipe because if you taste this lasagna, you'll never eat grandma's lasagna again. So believe me, this is one of the tastiest lasagnas you'll ever come across. It's a fantastic little recipe. It's got a little twist to it. It's not your average lasagna that you'll probably be used to, but I've given it a little twist with some roasted Mediterranean vegetables and well worth trying this recipe. So without further ado, let's get cooking. So the ingredients we're going to be using today can't have lasagna without lasagna, lasagna pasta, ground beef mince, some peppers, different colours, some aubergine, some classic Italian passata, Tin tomatoes, fresh basil, fresh rosemary, fresh garlic, tomato puree, butter, cream, courgettes. Red onions, some fresh tomatoes, some mature cheddar cheese, make sure it's mature, make sure it's cheddar, don't cheat on the cheese. Olive oil, some milk, mascarpone cheese. Gotta be mascarpone cheese. This is fantastic. Makes it nice and creamy, and uh, it's a nice little adds a nice little twist to it. Mixed herbs, dried mixed herbs. You can use Italian herbs if you want, um, but yeah, dried mixed herbs. First thing we're going to do is prepare the sauce because the sauce takes about an hour to an hour and a half to cook. Uh, a secret to a good tomato sauce is actually letting it slow cook for quite a while to reduce down and uh, break down all those tomato acidy things and bring out all the fantastic flavors. So if you come over here, I'll show you how to make tomato sauce, good Italian tomato sauce. So the first thing we want to do is in a hot pan in with some olive oil. And in with your onions. These are chopped white onions because I'm going to use them for the sauce. Red onions I will use for something else later on which I'll show you. Now we want these to sweat, we don't really want them to colour too much. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. Just basically want to sweat them off, get that sweetness out of them. Give them a bit of flavour. You don't want raw onion in your lasagna. Don't let them burn. Try not to get them brown too much. As I say, all we want to do is just sweat them off a little bit. Bearing in mind, this sauce is going to be slow cooking for about an hour and a half. So they're going to have plenty of time to cook. This process is basically just to get them sweetened up. Sweating it's called, sweating off the onions. So once the onions have been sweating down for about five minutes, 
I'm going to put in fresh basil, freshly chopped garlic, and fresh rosemary. I'm also going to put in some mixed herbs, about a teaspoon. And I'm using Himalayan pink salt because it is absolutely fantastic, lovely flavour, crystals. Um, there is a link at the bottom of this video if you want to get some. But you can use normal salt if you want. To. And we give that all a little stir. If only you had smell vision amazing. Typical Italian flavours, all mulgonated with the onions and the garlic and the fresh herbs in there. You know, the process of cooking is keeping it tasty all the way through and from the beginning to the end. So the fresh herb, the onions and the garlic have been cooking for about eight minutes, nine minutes now, and that's about as far as you need to take them. Next thing we're gonna do, pour in your passata. Also into that, your tin tomatoes. So they go in there like that. Some fresh ground pepper. Give it a good stir and that is basically going to sit on the back burner for at least an hour. The longer you can leave it the better, but an hour, an hour and a half should do. Leave it cooking slowly though because if you cook it too fast you'll burn it and once you burn it you don't want that burnt flavour going into your lasagna. So yeah just let it slow cook for about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, and in the meantime, prepare the rest of your lasagna. Slice them, not too thin, not too thick. Don't bother, keep, don't bother peeling them because the skin's quite edible and also gives it a bit of flavour. Keep the little end bits because you can use them for the sauce later on. So the next thing we want to do is get your peppers Put them on a tray upside down like so. 
all merrily lined in a row. Who was that? Where did that song come from? Cockles and shells. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, wasn't it? How does your garden grow? Silver bells and cockle shells, Mary Lee lined in a row. Well, they ain't cockle shells and ain't no garden. They are peppers and they are Mary Lee lined in a row, like so. There you have it, it's your peppers done. olive oil, give them a little sprinkle, some Malaysian rock salt, I'm also going to be using some coarse sea salt and it goes on there like that and a small sprinkling of mixed herbs like so lovely and they are going to go in, the, in a hot oven on 180 to 190 for about 10 minutes. So the peppers have been cooking in the oven for about 20 minutes. It's starting to get nice and brown. So when they get to that stage, take them out and they can go on a plate. I want to cool them down a little bit. So when they cool down, we can take the skin off. As you can see, look, the skin comes away nicely. I'll take that off. Doesn't matter if you leave some on but just try and get as much off as possible. And then fill your tray up again. Doesn't really matter what you put in there because it's all going to be roasted. So the onion can go in as well. Like so. Jets, lovely mixture of Mediterranean veg, the roasted Mediterranean veg. The roasting just brings out the flavour and gives it a completely different taste. Some mixed herbs. And a sprinkling of cracked sea salt. That goes on there like that. And into the oven. Top shelf, 180. So with the second lot of veg come out of the oven. So the next thing we're going to do is cook our mince. To do that. Olive oil in a hot pan. In with some onions. And the peppers we used earlier on. The off cuts from the peppers that we had left over earlier on. Goes in there. And fresh basil and some fresh rosemary. All goes in there like so. Just 
want to sweat that off a little bit. Next thing we're going to do as our mince to the onions. Just standard beef mince. Some people mix it with pork, but as I have a lot of Muslim friends, uh, besides keep this pork out of it, you can put pork with it as well. What you want to do is just slightly cook that mince out. You don't need to cook it all the way because I'll show you why in a minute. Break it up the little, break up the chunks if you can. You don't want any lumps in our lasagna. Seasoning, a bit of cracked salt, fresh ground pepper, right now I'm going to put the mushrooms in, put them done. Stir. And I'm also going to chuck some garlic in there. Lovely jubbly coming on a treat that is. Absolutely wonderful. Fit for the captain's table. Taste for seasoning. Now, I do like my food salty, but a lot of people don't. So I'm a little bit careful with the seasoning. At the same time, you want to have enough in there to give it some flavor. You don't want it to be bland people soon moan at that as well. So that's coming on a treat and what we're going to do now take some of this lovely tomato sauce and mix that in there with that like so. Give that a good little stir. We're going to leave that on a low heat to carry on cooking. The longer you can leave it, the better. Nice and tender. Beautiful. Turn the heat down on that. That is just absolutely mouth-watering. So the next thing we want to do is make our bechamel white sauce. Um, the way we're going to make this, take a pan, put your milk in, turn the heat on. Always good to turn the heat on, because otherwise it doesn't get hot. Like so. Into that goes your butter. Like so. 
And this is what is commonly known in the trade as uh, cowboy, cowboy bechamel. Uh, it's cowboy sauce. Uh, there's a lot of chefs out there that will probably slate me for making my sauce like this. But you know what? I don't care because it works. Never had a complaint with it and it tastes fantastic. As long as you cook it out, it's going to cook out in the oven anyway. So, you know, don't care about what anyone else says. The end product tastes good. Plain flour in it, make sure it is plain flour. I've added my water to the flour and it's like a thick paste. You can put your wallpaper up with that. So when you see the milk starting to rise because it gets hot that's why you need it on a high heat you also need a very thick saucepan because the last thing you want to do is burn this milk because if you burn it you have to throw it away and start all over again and the way to prevent burning it is use a thick saucepan put it on a high heat and bring it up really quick wait for it to rise as if it's going to pour over don't panic. The milk needs to be really hot for this to work. As you can see, it's starting to rise now. And that'll do. In goes your flour and water mixture. Give that a good stir. And look at that. Nice, creamy bechamel sauce. Done in two minutes. Keep stirring the bottom, but be careful because if you let it burn, you'll get black bits in it and you don't want any black bits in it. It needs to be nice and white and fluffy. And when it gets to that stage, turn off the gas. Do not leave it on the gas because it will carry on cooking and it will carry on, it will burn. Next thing we want to do is put in our mascarpone. That all goes in there like that. Now, mascarpone is a little bit tasteless. It has got a lovely creamy texture, which is what we're trying to get hold of. So give it more flavor, we're using mature cheddar, and that goes in there like so. We're also gonna use some double cream. Whack it in there like that. Some salt, seasoning, some fresh ground pepper, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is your bechamel sauce. Probably the finest cream sauce you'll taste this side of Calcutta. Beautiful, absolutely fantastic. Have a little taste for seasoning. Always good to taste your food. Beautiful. Bit more salt, bit more seasoning, but creamy, tasty, beautiful. So there you have it. There's your bechamel made and your tomato sauce is cooking away slowly over there nicely on the back burner give that a little stir and we are on the road to a delicious lasagna
And so the final thing we're going to do, put a load of spinach in there. goes in there like that. And to be honest with you, I'm going to take it off the heat now because the spinach will wilt, it'll wilt down with the heat that's remaining. We don't want to cook it out completely so as it's lost. We want to keep it so it gives the lasagna a bit of colour and also some extra flavour. A little bit of extra flavour. Do like a bit of spinach. So that's good as done. Spinach is in there now. We don't want to cook it any more than that because it's going to carry on cooking anyway. It's going to cook in the oven as well. And so for the fun bit of building our beef lasagna. First thing we're going to do is put some white sauce, bechamel sauce, in the bottom of the tray like so. Just a thin layer. Put the pasta on, stop it burning because we don't want to put the pasta directly on the tray. So that wouldn't be right, would it? Don't forget to leave comments below if you've tried this recipe or want to make some comments on it. Believe me, you won't be disappointed. This is absolutely gorgeous. Probably one of the best lasagnas you will ever taste. Pasta goes onto the white sauce like that. And another layer. Then we put some roasted vegetables on there. Just mix them about. Pretty much so as every little portion gets a little bit of everything wouldn't be fair otherwise would it? You don't want to have anyone moaning because they didn't get a bit of pepper or a bit of courgette or a bit of aubergine. Yeah, I know what people are like. Any excuse for a moan. Like so. This onion just takes on a completely different flavour when it's being roasted. Again, I've peeled all this veg, taking the peel off, so we haven't got crispy onion skin in a mouthful of food. A mouthful of lasagna. Thing we want to do cover it with some lovely bolognese mix this is absolutely divine you know what I'm so glad I learned how to cook and I'll never forget my dad said to me once when I was young many years ago so what do you want to do when you grow older, son? I said, I want to be a chef. He said, don't be ridiculous. He said, why don't you get a real job? Anyway, that's another story. So after that, another layer of our lovely lasagna. Now like so, like so, like so. vegetables, last lot of vegetables so spread them about nicely, make sure everyone gets a little bit, every little helps. Like so. And as I say these roasted vegetables just taste so much better. And fried or raw and that's it that's all your vegetables on there
give them a little grating of some fantastic Italian Parmigiano, just for the flavour. Be rude not to, wouldn't it? Fantastic. sauce on top of that. Jubbly. Beautiful. Just what the doctor ordered. Then we put our final layer of Pasta on top. Just like that. Job done. Finally, make the melon on top. top. Make sure all the pasta is covered. We don't want it burning do we? Cover the edges. it with some fresh tomato so lovely give it another grating of the fresh parmigiano beautiful do love the taste of parmesan. And just for the flavour. A sprinkling of mixed herbs on top of that. Voila, beautiful. And then a final sprinkling of some mature cheddar cheese. It's gonna give it a lovely brown effect when it cooks on top. Fantastic. And there you have it. That can go in the oven now for about 45 minutes to an hour. And uh, when it's ready, take it out and eat it. So there you have it. Beef lasagna, straight out of the oven. 